All right. So, we will continue with the CI and uh, we wanted to show some of the numbers just to tell you what is the contribution of the doubles and singles and so on and it was very clear that the doubles was the most important part of the correlation energy compared to the singles mainly because of the Brillouin's theorem and of course, the two particle nature of the electron correlation and we have discussed that two particle nature that the two particles are more likely to come close together and they will then repel and plus your Hamiltonian is also one and two particle interaction. So, they can bring two particles closer. So, in some sense these are two important facets and because of that doubly excited determinants are also very important. Singles are important only because they affect the doubles. Actual energy please remember actual energy depends only on doubles. I, I, I think I showed you that that whatever is the full CI even if you have full CI the energy correlation energy depends only on doubly excited amplitudes correct. But however, doubly excited amplitude themselves depend on singles, triples, quadruples and so on. So, it is very easy to see the structure of the CI matrix if you do a full CI because you know because of Slater rule any any excited determinant cannot uh, uh, oh, oh, cannot have interaction with another determinant which is of more than two excitations right that will become zero. So, you can see the structure in the following manner that you have of course, we are talking only of correlation energy. So, the first one is always 0 and then we have H 0 S, H 0 D, H 0 T and so on in a full CI ok. This is 0 because of Brillouin's theorem. So, this is an additional simplification that we have and similarly in the column you have singles with Hartree-Fock, doubles with Hartree-Fock, triples with Hartree-Fock and so on. I hope the symbols are clear to everybody ok. Then you have the diagonal block of single singles, singles doubles, singles triples and so on. Note here on the first row everything is 0, even this is 0 because of Slater rule. So, the only term that actually contributes is Hartree-Fock with doubles and everything else is 0 from here onwards, everything is 0. So, this is 0, 0 and so on, these blocks and then you have H S D, H S sorry H S T, you will have more term H S Q and so on. Similarly, doubles, Hartree-Fock, double singles, doubles, 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 triples, doubles, quadruples and so on continue. I hope all of you can write this now. So, you have triple singles. So, it is just filling the matrix ok. So, this is your diagonal triples, triples and so on. So, depending on how many you take your matrix can be written in a block form. These are all blocks now. This is the only block which is one dimensional which is Hartree Fock to Hartree Fock. This is one dimensional rest are either rectangular or square. So, this is your matrix and then you have 1 C S, C D, C T, C Q, etc. whatever is there equal to same thing E correlation 1 C S, C D, etc. You can clearly see when I multiply the first row times the first column, since everything is 0, the only thing that multiplies is H double O double with C D to give you E correlation into 1. I hope it is clear. It is a first row into first column gives you the first number here, correct. Right? So, your E correlation depends only on C D because all this is 0. So, H O T will multiply with C T, but C T does not matter what is C T. This block is 0. Remember, these are not number multiplication, it is a block wise. So, this is a, a rectangular one uh, block of a row multiplying by a column. C T is a column, number of C T. So, it is a number by number multiple. So, each of them is there is a summation. But the point that I am trying to say that the correlation energy always depends on 
CD. Only one that really affects the correlation method directly. However, when I do this next level of equation, I start to get equations for CA, CD, CD, and that is where you can see when I look at the doubles equation, it is HDO into 1 plus HDS into CS, HDD into CD, HDT into CT, and so on, HDQ into CQ. All these will affect the E correlation time CD. Right? When you do multiply second row times the color, so everything will affect. So, only thing that will not affect is what are 0 by Slater rules. So, for example, in singles row, I know from here it is 0, right. From the doubles row up to here, it will actually survive, then the zeros will start. And triples row, it will go much further and so on. However, in the triples row, this itself is 0 by Slater rule. So, there is a lot of structure in which zeros will come. So, there are some simplifications, but essentially as you build, everything will get affected. So, CD will be affected by up to quadruples, then quadruples are affected up to hextuple. So, in a way it is a chain reaction. So, that is why the full CI, if you do full CI, results are going to be different. Although correlation energy depends only on CD, the CD will be affected by others. So, that minor differences will be. So, that is the reason CISD and DCI or CID are giving different results, yeah, because the double amplitude changes. It's not that the correlation energy directly depends on single amplitude, but double amplitude changes because of the effect of singles. Is it clear? Okay, so that was the numbers that I was showing. Let me go back to some more numbers. You also saw the effect of the full CI at uh, the basis set. That will be the basis set things change. One of the important things is to look at ionization potential. So, let us say I am doing a CI calculation and then trying to calculate the ionization potential. What is ionization potential? I calculate an n electron and n minus 1 electron and take a degree. So, I do a Hartree form. So, there are many ways of calculating ionization potential. One would be to do Hartree form for n and n minus 1 and subtract. One is to use Koopman's approximation. Remember, these two are different. Because when I do Hartree Fock, I am taking relaxation effects. In Koopman's, I just take the orbitals of the n electron system. We have, we have explained that, and in fact, that works out very good because of the cancellation between relaxation and correlation. Okay. So, sometimes, so Koopman's gives a better result than doing Hartree Fock separately. You can do CI for both. So, when I am presenting the results, they are results which are exactly you know, done, done in the same manner. So, we are looking at the ionization potential of let us say nitrogen. Nitrogen ionization potential has been of great interest. So, we are looking at the lowest ionization potentials. So, two of them. So, one is uh, 3 sigma g, one is 1 pi u. They are simply called 3 sigma g, 1 pi u because these are the orbitals, Hartree Fock orbitals from where I have taken the electron. So, that is the meaning of 3 sigma g and 1 pi. I hope all of you remember N2 bond or uh, molecular orbital diagram. The last two orbitals, homo and homo and homo minus 1, are 3 sigma g and 1 pi. In fact, there is a there is a problem in ordering them. Which is higher, which is lower depends on the Hartree Fock, what basis set you use. So, that is another issue that you will see here. So, 3 sigma g and 1 pi u. So, if I do Koopman's, if I do Koopman, so I just write k, that means just look at the orbital energy of the Hartree Fock. You see, this is 0 0.635. Again, everything is an atomic unit, and this is 0.615. These are all in atomic. So, it is easier to ionize was uh, the, the 1 pi u. Let me also look at the, tell you the basis set. This basis is a very large basis 6s, 4p, 3d, 2f. Slater type orbital. It is a very large basis set that was used. Okay. So, these are the Slater, and each of them has, can be expanded in Gaussian, but they are nearly exact results. 
So, if I use a very large basis set, my Kupman's approximation within the Kupman's approximation at least does not have basis set error because it is a very large basis set. And you can see that 1 pi u is actually one because your yes, your ionization huh? 2 f here. Yeah. Yeah, nothing wrong. Why well, I told you star basis, right? When one valence polarizes, that is D. But you can use also F, G, H. I have 2 F means not 2 F. 2 number of F type. Well, sorry. This means six, just like here, it is not 6 S. You, you did not question this, right? 6 S means 6 number of S type functions. 4 number of p type functions in the basis set from nitrogen, 3 number of d type function and 2 number of f type ok, sorry <laughs> yeah. that is a simple basis set nomenclature ok, because principal quantum number is not of any relevance, so we never talk of principal quantum do not confuse with that ok, so this is Kupman's and then you have SDCI. 0.582, this is an important result, 0.61, and you have experiment, this is 0.573, all are in atomic, 0.62. So now, this is a very interesting result, I, I hope you can see the reflect on the results. If I do Kupman's, which is a good approximation actually within the Hartley point. The ordering of p sigma g and 1 pi u is different from what you get from experiment. Okay, because experiment shows actually it shows that this this should be the easiest to ionize. That means essentially your lowest n minus one electron state will be doublet sigma. Why doublet sigma? I hope you can you know at least some amount of symmetry because I am taking out electron from sigma g. So, the final n electron state will have doublet and it will be a capital C state, ok. That will be the lowest state of not the doublet pi, but what Kupman shows is different that doublet pi is the lowest state of E n minus or n 2 plus, if I do n 2 plus and you can see that the SDCI gives reasonably correct value, not exactly correct, but the order is at least correct. So, this is in fact shown as one of the failures of Hartree Fogg, that Hartree Fogg, when I do Kupman's approximation, which is supposed to be better than delta SCF anyway, difference of Hartree Fogg because of the cancellation, is still not able to give the correct train, even the qualitative train, forget about actual numbers, ok. But if I do a correlation calculation, SDCI or DCI, I get reasonably right results. So, this shows that the importance of correlation that the Hartree Fogg itself is not a good method. Uh, there is a, another result of lowest IP of water. Whenever I am saying lowest ionization potential means you are taking out electron from the homo. I hope that is clear because that is easiest to take out because ionization potential is exactly reverse and negative of the orbital energy. So, the lowest IP of water again some numbers, this is actually again a very large basis set 39 STO basis, it is a very large basis. So, we have we have calculated H2O and H2O plus to CI and takes a diff, take a difference. So, this is Kupman's, this is only the lowest one. 0.507. Again, everything is in atomic unit. This is SDCI, which is 0.452, and experiment 0.463. So, again, just shows that what is the level of correction. So, this was kind of error that you had when you did two months. And now, SDCI almost brings it close to the experiment. Okay. And in the case of nitrogen, it even it, it gives the right order. 39 STO basis, it is not really primitive. So, basically, these, these, these are contracted Gaussian. So, 
there are a lot. Yeah, that that is the details are there. I am not giving the details of the basic set, but it means there are 39. See, each letter type orbital is expanded in terms of primitive Gaussian, right? Contracted Gaussian. In a, in a, your language, 39 contracted Gaussian. Okay. So the, this is a very large basis set, as you can see. Then each each of them is expanded. I mean, the details are there. It's unimportant. But the point that I am trying to show is that this is a very very extensively good basis set. And the SCF is still not good, quite away. When you do SDCI, the IP comes out quite well. Then there are effects of singles and doubles, and uh, this is a this is a very important table. Let me also write, write this table. So it actually comes out as C minus O plus in actual practice. So let us see what it gives. CO dipole moment. So this is SCF. We will also give it energy and dipole moment. I mean, energy is not very interesting. But so, if you do SCF minus 112.788, again, it is an atomic unit, everything is an atomic unit, and dipole moment is. Uh, Minus 0 0.108. It's a very interesting result. I will just show you. Then you do SCF plus 138 doubles. I just want to clarify what does mean. This is again a 30, uh, this is again a basis set, some extended basis set, it does not matter. The point that we are trying to say is that even when you choose doubles, you can choose them selectively, doubly excited configuration. How? Tell me how. How can you choose selectively doubly excited configuration? If you look at the wave function from the perturbation theory, the wave function of the first order contains doubly excited determinant, right? What are the coefficients of the determinant? It is the matrix element divided by the orbital energy, right? So, for example, each of the coefficients are psi Hartley form. H psi doubles, whatever is the doubles, let us say A B R S divided by epsilon A plus epsilon B minus epsilon R, something like this, correct. Some denominator and this, and of course, for the correlation energy, a mod square of this divided by. So, each of this number tells you what is the contribution of each A B R S into the correlation energy. This Value divided by this number. If this is very small, then you can actually neglect this. So you can assume that that particular ABRS is not very important, which means which can happen in two ways: either this value is very small, or this value is very large. Which means there is a large gap between these two occupied and two virtual orbitals, and that 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 means very high lying virtual orbitals. You need not worry. Because the denominator itself will kill it. Okay, so that, that that is a way to select doubles in CI. So many times we do double CI, but we don't take all doubles. So you do a very quick calculation of this number, and then decide this number again can be calculated as AB anti symmetric RS by Slater rule, and then quickly calculate what is the value, and then decide the double. So that is the calculation that has been done. So let us do this 138 doubles. The value of energy becomes minus 113.016. Dipole moment remains minus 0 0.06. Let me let me tell you the positive dipole moment is C minus O plus. Just to give you a reference. So you can see that this is actually C plus O minus. Okay, this is also C plus O minus. Which is wrong because the positive that this is how the, the table is being put. Positive means it is C minus O plus. So, SCF I do a DCI, the dipole moment is still wrong. Energy, of course, improves marginally, but energy is not DC. I want to you to focus on this. Dipole moment still comes out wrong C minus O plus, okay. Small C minus O plus. This is much larger C minus O plus, it is reduced, but it is still wrong, correct. Then we do SCF plus 
200 double. This is interesting. So, I take more number of double A's, some more. The result is minus 113.034 and this still does not improve, minus 0 0.07. So, it tell, tells you that by just in, including doubles, it still remains C plus O minus. Qualitatively, it still remains wrong, C O. But what I now do is the following, a C F plus some doubles, 138 doubles. But instead of adding the 62 extra double, they have added 62 singles. So, number of configuration is still 200, but we have added some more singles instead of doubles. So, it is a CISD, but a truncated CISD within the CISD also have selected and here the result is minus 113.018. Again, energy you see is almost saturated, it does not matter one way or the other, but now look at this number plus 0 0.0. And experiment, I mean energy is not important, experiment dipole moment is plus 0 0.04. I think it is a very interesting table, so I will try to reflect on this. So, what does this show? Tell me first. What did you learn from this? I give you some numbers. Now, what did you learn? much more than energy that is important. Dipole moments are affected by singles much more than the energies that is the first very important. Whereas, for energy I told you doubles is more important, but now what we see is that when you come to dipole moment actually more than doubles what is important is singles. Moment I take singles I start to get the right results. So, one important lesson if you do DCI for doubles, uh, for dipole moment, it is a bad calculator. If you are going to calculate dipole moment, you must take singles, except that we never do CIS because energy does not improve. So, the ideal thing to do is CISD. It is very important to do CISD to get the dipole moment correct in most cases because the real correlation contribution to dipole moment comes from the singles. And we will, we will, I will tell you why, why, why that is so. But let us reflect on the result. And as soon as you took some singles, you can see that the dipole moment went in the right direction, qualitative. In fact, the CO dipole moment and ionization potential of nitrogen, these two were told as a very significant result showing that the SCF is bad. First of all, SCF is bad. But if you do not take singles, even correlation calculations are bad in many cases for dipole moment and this is also another example. CO is a very brilliant example because dipole moment of CO is very small. See plus 0 0.044, see it is a C minus O plus but it is almost neutral, it is only plus 0 0.044, it is almost neutral carbon and oxygen electronegativity difference is very very small, but unlike what you would expect it is not C plus O minus first of all, a very small C minus O plus and that is why it is a test of a theory. So, if you have to if you have to approach a 0 which is not by symmetry, it is a much bigger test of a theory. If it is by symmetry, you will automatically come even if you make some small small errors, but if it is not by symmetry by cancellation of many many effects, then all effects must be taken correctly to have that cancellation and this is the example where to reproduce this one has to be very very careful. So, you can see that with reasonably large calculation, I am almost close, but the singles are important. If you just keep on improving doubles, nothing will happen. This will remain negative. So, the result will be qualitatively still wrong. And that is the reason the CO is a very difficult molecule to calculate. In fact, if you do Hartree Fab, first of all, you will get on it in a good basis also. So, you will get a completely wrong result. So, you do a charge analysis of CO with Hartree power. I mean, it is totally wrong. You will show C plus or minus. Okay. And then everything, all your, all your chemistry will go wrong.
So, this is one good example why electron correlation is important and why not only electron correlation, the correct way of taking electron correlation is important. So, that is that is a very important part to analyze. Now, why does dipole moment get affected by singles more than the energy? Can somebody tell me that? I hope all of you know what is dipole moment operator. It is a one electron operator. Okay, dipole, yeah, R, R dot F, yes. Will know is of course not. Right, right. So, you, so if you have a dipole operator mu, and all of you know it is basically Q charge times R, Ri, sum over that. So, it is a one electron operator. So, these quantities like psi hot you form, psi singles, this is very, very important because it is a one electron operator. In fact, if you do this calculation, psi hot you form mu psi doubles. What is the result of this? This is actually 0. So, because by Slater rule, this is a one electron operator. So, this is actually 0. So, if I do double ci, the dipole moment will not directly connect to the hydrogen. Of course, you will still say why did double ci change the value? It changed the value because I had other terms like psi doubles, mu psi doubles. Because when I do double ci, this side is also ci, hartree fock plus doubles. This side is also hartree fock plus doubles. So, I am taking an average value of dipole moment. So, a web function where left and right hand sides. So, this is all I will do for, for dipole moment because I do not have any variational method. So, I calculated the ci web function. I calculate the dipole moment as an average value. So, that means psi hartree fock plus cd psi doubles on the left and psi c, c s psi s, then again mu and the same thing on the right, hartree fock plus c s, right. So, this is the c i s level of calculation. So, this is how I calculate and of course, the normalization, denominator, okay. The denominator is important because it is intermediate normalization. So, remember the whole web function is not normalized unity. So, I have to take the denominator, but if I now calculate this first one gives me Hartree Fock dipole moment, it does not change. Then it gives me psi d mu psi h f, which is 0, but then you have psi s mu psi h f, which is very significant, and similarly the converse terms. So, I have doubles to doubles and singles to singles. These are all that survive, but quite clearly, when I have singles, I have a very large term coming from this. And that actually starts to affect the dipole moment more than this term. This term only shifts little. Bit. This is the more dominant term because it is a direct interaction with the Hartree Fock epsilon. And this survives, whereas for double, this is 0. So, that is the reason it is important to have singles when you calculate dipole moment. So, never do a one electron property calculation, not only dipole moment, any one electron property calculation without singles because you will, of course, change the result. But a major part is now not taken care, of, which is exactly opposite to what you said for the energy. For energy, we said singles does not really affect because for Hamiltonian there is a Brillouin theorem. For dipole moment, there is no Brillouin theorem. Okay, so these are small small things, but it's important to remember. Huh? 